All right, is that low Clark? We're gonna be underwater for a minute. Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Anyway, I thought this would be a nicer little background. And I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna try to keep it clear and straight, okay? I wanna read a book that's very close to my own heart because it's in relation to my in-laws and my wife and her family history. A woman named Marie Sandoz contributed uh, very much to the historical society in Nebraska as a museum, a memorial. Uh, she uh, recorded most of the historical stuff we know about the Plains Indian and Nebraska area and the community surrounding community um, the book she's best known and loved for is Old Jewels and it's a biography basically about her dad and the community that uh, they were homesteading okay so this man was some kind of like a lawman uh, Jules Sandoz Jules Amy Sandoz, um, there were Swiss, French, French Swiss, okay, people from Switzerland, okay, and uh, France. Um, they basically uh, came to the United States, he, uh, old Jules came to the United States, and he wanted to be a homesteader. Uh, there's orders in here. Now, what I found interesting was there's pictures with this book I want to share with you guys. And they're amazing pictures, but it's a great thing to have the historical society. Okay, but this woman, she's contributed a lot to our history about Nebraska and that area and the Plains Indians, like I said, the Plains uh, Native Americans. And uh, she just is a wonderful writer. Yeah. There's some language in the book. Beware, there's language in the book in the first page. Okay, has the N word, but I'm going to say it the way they had it because it's a quote. And this was the old days when this was made. And uh, I'm not going to censor the book, okay, for politically correct purposes because this is historical. And we are not going to go 1984. And start editing these books. Okay. I'm going to say it how it is. And it has the N-word in the first quote. And it's not in a, used in a bad way. Okay. That you might want to perceive. So if there's any people that African descent or. Um, yeah. Beware. Okay. So I'm going to say the N-word. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. No. I'm not going to do that. Anyway. Uh, that's PC cult, and I'm not going to do that because that's 1984, George Orwell. This is uh, Jules, old Jules Marie Sandoz, not George Orwell. So, anyway, I thought I'd introduce you to the book, and we'll look at some of the pictures of the people. I don't read the first quote. Let's let let's look at the book. Let's see how the book looks. Okay, old Jules. Now this is to dad from Barbara and Ron. That's my wife's aunt. Okay. Old Jewels. Yeah. Old Jewels by Marie Sandoz, 48th edition. With illustrations. Hastings House Publishers, New York. 40th edition. Published October 1935. Reprinted 1975. One can go into a wild country and make it tame. But like a coat and cap and mittens that he can never take off, he must always carry the look of the land as it was. He can drive the plow through the nigger wool, make fields and roads go every way, build him a fine house and wear 
the stiff collar, and yet he will always look like the grass where the buffalo have eaten and smell the new ground his feet have walked on. Big Andrew. That's the introduction to the book, and I think it does very good duty. Or Marie wouldn't have put it in there. I think she's kind of helping guide us to go through this book. Forward, Lincoln, Nebraska, March 23rd, 1935, to the Judges' Atlantic Nonfiction Contest, 8 Arlington Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Gentlemen, Old Jules is the biography of my father, Jules Amy Sandoz. I have also tried in a larger sense to make it the biography of a community, the Upper Niobora Country and Western Nebraska. The book grew out of a childhood and adolescent spirit spent among the storytellers of the frontier for the frontier, whether by Turner's famous definition or by any other, is a land of storytellers, and in this respect, remains frontier in nature until the last original settler is gone. It grew then out of the long hours of the smoky old kitchen, in the smoky old kitchen on the running water, the silent hours of listening behind the stove or in the wood box, when it was assumed that of course I was asleep in bed, so I, the Marie of the story, Heard all the accounts of the haunt, of the hunts, the well accident and fights with the cattlemen and the sheepmen. Was given hints here and there of the tragic scarcity of women, when a man had to marry anything that got off the train. As old Jules often said, knew the droughts, the droughts, the storms, and the wind in isolation. At school. We heard other versions, partly through naturally cruelty of childhood, partly because a feud was on and we were actually outsiders in the school. But the most impressive stories were those told to me by old Jules himself, perhaps on the top of Indian Hill, overlooking the spot where a man was hung under his leadership and the scene of six years of lawing that drove his second wife into the insane, insane asylum. Perhaps he limped through the orchards as he talked with me close behind. My hands fall, my hands full of ducks or grouse or quail. Perhaps I followed among flowering cherry trees, carrying the plats to the orchard. Perhaps I drove the team on long trips while he smoked and talked of his own dreams and his joys and his disappointments and always was I too frightened of him to voice either approval or surprise. Although there was apparently no affection between us, my father somehow talked more sincerely to me, particularly when we went hunting, than was his custom. During those stories, he never looked at me, almost as though he were talking to himself, without feeling any compunction to throw in another grizzly. Perhaps it was because of my cringing cowardice from ridicule. I'm well over that now. He could be certain that I would not laugh. Sometimes it seems that a quirk of fate has tied me to this father I feared so much, even into my maturity. The three crucial moments of his life after I could take part in our family life involved me as an unwilling participant, the snake bite, the near, near killing of the Strasburgers, and my near ending with the same gun in the final moment when, we, when he died. Out of these events came the need to write this book, augmented by one line my father wrote me in 1925. 
when I received honorable mention in the Harper Intercollegiate Short Story Contest, guarded by the name of Murray McCumber. He discovered my activities, sent me one line in his emphatic up and down strokes. You know I consider writers and artists the maggots of society. The book became a duty the last day of his life when he asked that I write of his struggles as a locator, a builder of communities, and a bringer of fruit to the panhandle. Before I wrote one word of old Jules, I took notes on all references to the panhandle in all the important papers of the state from 1880 to 1929 and more complete notes on every panhandle or near panhandle paper from its establishment to the end. The gleanings fill three heavy notebooks. Then, of course, I read all the frontier literature and history obtainable with the study of frontier economics and politics. In the archive of Nebraska State Historical Society, I went through the entire Ricker collection containing interviews with all the old-timers. The late Judge Ricker of Chadron could find in 20 years of diligent search. I exposed my mother to months of inqui inquisitional inquiry and interviewed everyone available. Most valuable, however, were the 4,000 letters and documents in the files. No boxes. Of old Joel's himself, a little moldy from the leaf flat roof of our Kincaid home, but generally intact. His habit of reviving has saved many of his violent letters for me in his own characteristically forceful push and pull penmanship. As I read, the stories of my childhood came back to me with new significance. And as I arranged and rearranged the bits of information and what seemed to be the closest ver verisimilitude to life as those people lived in the running water country, and duty became a privilege. Not one character included or regretfully put aside what I have won wit difficult. Not my mother, who had the courage and the tenacity to live with this man so many years, or the Serbers, to whom many of us owe what joy we derive from music and from art. Net Sears, Jim the Convict, the Peters, Andy Brown, the Yellow Boy, the family that are the Swartches, and that constituted the bit of glamour of our community. To sit, freeze, Dr. Walter Reed, or old Jules himself, these people have endured, and as I review them from the vantage point of twice knowledge of my eyes missed, a gallant race, and I salute them. I can promise affidavits from the Nebraska State Historical Society on my account of moment as, for instance, the Nyabora feud, the cattlemen murder of the brother of old Jules, and so forth, from new newspapers of the period, as to my historical and personal integrity, as well as my portrait of the time and the community, I refer you to Dr. A. E. Sheldon, superintendent of the Society, State Capitol, Lincoln, with whom I have worked at various times for years in the capacity of associate editor of the Nebraska Historical Mag Magazine and director of much of the research for the last two years. Dr. Sheldon home homesteaded northwest of Valentine in 1886, published a newspaper at Chadron in the 90s, and knew old Jules well. I refer you also to Frank L. Williams, Managing Editor, Nebraska State N Journal, Lincoln. Mr. Williams spent his sub-reporter days in western Nebraska in the original, uh, excuse me, 
Mr. Williams spent his cub reporter days in western Nebraska in the 80s and knew the old jewels of the orchard days. Thank you, Marie Sandoz. It's a beautiful book. Here's all the chapters. Spring, Mirage. I'm not going to read them all to you, but I want to show you the book so you can the pictures of the people. You can get them in your mind because I'm going to read this book. and It's going to be a good book. If you don't like it, don't follow. I may find a better way to record. There's old jewels. All right. Old jewels. I think he'd scare me. Huh. Now, that was him in older days. The silver ribbon of the Nyabora. Okay. Photographed by Dwight Kinch. Joel's Amy Sandoz. 1886. Courtesy of Nebraska State Historical Society. There he is in the younger age. Not a bad looking guy. Now the Sandoz said people are confused with this. It's not Spanish. Okay, it's French, Swiss. Okay. Facsimile. Last page of letter from Dr. Walter Reed to Father of Jewels, February 12th, 1885. We'll, we'll try to read that later. We get to the part we need to. I want to contact the historical society and see if we can get the audiobook going. From uh, you know um, the people that do the audiobooks. Anyway, the old barracks, Fort Robinson. Okay, beautiful pictures. The horse and buggy. Okay, this was a lawman. All right. Let's see, homesteading lawman, uh, dugout and homesteaders. Okay, there's the family that I'm married to, which I'll tie them all into where they are today and how we got even here where we are in this house with my wife and children who have the same blood and share this people's flesh and bone. Okay. Yeah, horse and buggies, man. Wow. I think I was born uh, born too early. Mary, fourth wife of old Jules. That's 18. 95. Not a bad looking woman. Pretty beautiful, actually, in my opinion. Um, the, the intelligence is in the eyes of these people. You know. This is uh, the South Orchard. South Orchard. Okay. So you can see he was growing stuff. The North Orchard and Vineyard. Okay, it was beautiful looking. Obviously knew what he was doing. Uh, fruitful. Uh, Ken, I couldn't grow this. Uh, according to do uh, Dr. Arnold Murray, Ken Knight would not be able to produce this. So, uh, but you know that's Dr. Arnold Murray saying that. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out to people. In middle life, 19, 1905. Wow. Look at this amazing pictures. I wish I had better photography for you, but beautiful, beautiful pictures. I, I love the history of my family. Anyone married to their family, they should love the history of their family. Even if it's a bad history, they should love to know it, you know. The great herd. Whoa, look at that herd. Oh my gosh. See all those spots? That's cattle. These cattlemen knew what they were doing. They knew. 
Now, this is what I found interesting today that motivated me to get to the book more uh, faster. The state historical, uh, state, Nebraska State Horticultural Society. Now, if you look real close, it says, uh, let's focus in on that. You can't read it at that scope. What it says is uh, 18th Horticultural District, Sandoz Experiment Station. Sandoz Experiment Station. Okay. Jules A. Sandoz, Director. I'm going to try to read some of the fine print later. Life Member State Horticultural Society. I'm not going to read all that stuff. But basically, there was an experiment going on. Okay? And what this is is him, like I said, he's a lawman too. Facsimile of Old Joel's order for guns and merchandise. Okay. This man hung people too. No wonder she was sick scared of him. Okay. But look at this. Beverly Hillbilly style. I could say it because I love the family. Look at that. After a hunt. Ooh, that looks just like the old Beverly Hillbillies, huh? Look at that dog beautiful dog these people care for their animals too okay they loved animals I know that because I've seen all of them have dogs and they their dogs are wonderful dogs reflect the personality of the owner and so if you got wonderful dogs and you probably have a wonderful person inside if they don't show it outside in the orchard uh, you got Nice, beautiful orchard. Among the zinnias. I wonder what those are. I don't know. Anyone wants to come back, uh, co comment back about what they know these are. Zinnias. I don't know what he was growing, but uh, woo, who knows what he was growing. <laughs> to my uh, mother-in-law, Jenny, who's the one that's related to these people. <laughs> uh, maybe he had him some tomato tomato plants, huh, Jenny? Maybe he had secret stash of tomato plants. Who knows? He looked not out of his mind, but he looked very much... Uh, well, he was experimenting with horticultural. He probably knew about the good old tomato plants. Anyway, a word with friends. Look at this. He's sitting in a wagon. This is real stuff. Real stuff. Now, this is cool looking pictures here. Joel and Jim on horse. Okay. Let me try to get a better angle on that. It's riding the horses. Yeehaw! Alright. Fritz. On the right, and a friend. They obviously had friends, and most of their friends are good people that I've met through the Sandoz people. Anyway, uh, hopefully, I can reach the historical society. I want to continue the history of these people and the uh, in the spirit that Marie and Jules wanted. Okay, endless monotony caught. And, and held forever in sand. A beautiful quote. Okay. So, I'm going to continue later, but this is uh, dedicated to uh, this is dedicated to old Jules. It's my family. They are peculiar people. Um, they are very much scientific minded. Um, they uh, they have a pharmaceutical company. They were the first ones to make the best 
pharmaceutical grade LSD um, that was available at the time with the experiments they did uh, they make watches, beautiful watchmakers. Um, they know how to do uh, intricate work there. And intelligent people. This guy was on his way to being. Uh, um, is on his way to to uh, becoming a doctor when he left Switzerland. But that's part of the story. So I'm gonna leave it with this. I'm gonna go with the famous picture and leave it with the famous picture. Old jewels, okay. So old jewels. All right. Is that love, Clark? I <clears throat> plan on reading this book to you guys for a purpose that uh, you won't fully understand until later.